What is going on guys welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here today I bring you another Destiny 2 video and today I bring you the best prep guide for the next DLC the Joker's Wild but before we go any further guys if you do enjoy the video and would like to show your support you can by hitting that like button and if you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos be sure to subscribe. So about a week before the Black Armoury dropped, I uploaded a video stating the steps you should take if you want to make the most out of what you have and what you can do to level up your power level as best you could when the new DLC, which was then the Black Armoury, dropped. Although many things I mentioned were great legit ways of actually doing so, doing that a week before meant people had to dash here and there and do many things. Also the point of because there was basically only a week left, you couldn't take full advantage. Hence why I'm bringing you this prep guide a good two months before the next DLC is out meaning you have plenty of time to do what I'll mention today in time for the next DLC meaning you can optimize your gain as best possible in terms of leveling when the Joker's Wild drops. Okay so if you are at that level of about 650 now there isn't much in terms of power level to play for right now you can't get any higher so what's the point? But if you ain't a 650 yet, don't use this guide until you get there as you'd want to be 650 when the Joker's World drop to get the most out of this strat. Okay so firstly let me discuss the things you can't do and stack because obviously the strat consists of stacking everything you can to do a massive opening when the Joker's World DLC drops. Prime engrams, these do not stack. I tried leaving them to go to my postmaster by filling up my engram slots within my inventory by buying engrams from the Cryptarch. I had about five prime engrams in my postmaster, but they stayed at the level they dropped. And unlike most other things, they didn't rise with your power level when left untouched. So prime engrams don't work and won't help you. Another thing which you can't do is flashpoints. These obviously each reset travel to different planets. That planet then requires you to do a certain set things to be rewarded a powerful reward. What you can do is do the percentage bar until the planter vendor on the flashpoint will reward you a powerful piece of gear, but you just don't pick it up and leave it there until DLC day. Now when it comes to reset, obviously flashpoint will move to a different planet. But the problem is guys, as soon as you pick up one flashpoint reward, even if you have stacked three or four, as soon as you pick up that one initial flashpoint reward, and say we do this, say we stack five, four or five when Joker's Wild drops, so we've got five flashpoint planets to go and visit. As soon as you pick up that first one, the other gear drops lower. I think the game registers you can only use one flashpoint per week, so there's actually no point at all in using flashpoints to do this. You may as well wait until reset day, you may as well wait until the Joker's Wild drops and then do it then. Also guys, the Hawthorne 5000 XP powerful clan reward for completing clan bounties will not stack. But what you can do here is complete 5 1k XP bounties and keep them in your inventory in advance for the Joker's Wild. This way it will just save you a little time doing them after the weekly reset. Also the clan engrams do not stack either, she will only hold you one of each I believe, so one PvP, one Red, one Nightfall, and I believe is it Gambit, I'm not even certain, but yes, she'll only stack one of these each for some strength. Well that's what happened to me anyway, because I stacked a load for the Black Armoury, including the 5k XP reward, but when it comes to the Black Armoury dropping and me trying to catch in all these rewards, I literally had two clan engrams and no 5k XP bounty reward, so yeah, it seems as though there's no point in doing these. Ikora you can do in advance so do 20 bounties and cash them in just do not collect the reward until the DLC drops again this like Hawthorne's clan bounty just save you time in doing 20 bounties uh, upon reset day upon DLC day so if you just complete 20 bounties cash them in but do not visit her and pick up that powerful reward until DLC day now onto bounties that do work and you can stack and will definitely help you out now because it's here and it's partially why I've decided to drop this video early, it's Iron Banner. It ends in a few days but Lord Saladin offers 7 bounties which if you complete and cash in, reward you powerful gear. These I stacked last time and they worked a treat. So if you are yet to do these on your main, second or third characters, definitely grab these, complete them and stack them in your inventory, ready for Joker's Wild DLC. I mean there has been no word of another Iron Banner coming between now and Joker's Wild. I mean I know it's coming after the next DLC, we can see this on the road map, but Iron Banner used to be a monthly thing, this I don't think is still the case, so if I were you, I'd do these while you can. The Drifters Weekly Gambit Bounties also work amazingly, these ain't always the same either. 
I believe he has four or five different weekly bounties which he can offer. So grab these one per week, complete them and leave them in your inventory. Another important thing to state, unless completed, don't forget these bounties do expire. So make sure you complete them before they do indeed expire. I believe they last around seven days before they expire though. So you've got quite a bit of time to get through with them. But yeah, the Drifter each week offers this single weekly bounty. Check it each week. If it's one you haven't already had and done, grab it, complete it and stack it, people. Next, we have Petra on the Dreaming City. She offers three bounties which reward you powerful gear. These, I'm afraid, do not stack. I mean, they're basically the same each week. So when you complete them one week and keep them in your inventory, when you go and see it next week after reset, it will say you already have these. So yes, I mean, you can complete them and just keep them in your inventory for when Joker's World drops. I mean, that isn't a problem. Or you could wait until the week before Joker's World drops and do them then. The fourth bounty she offers, although it doesn't directly offer you powerful gear, the offering to the Oracle, as well I'm aware, definitely seems to have increased chances of exotics to drop that is for sure but yes people these are worth your time picking up and completing them while you have the time another thing to do every week now up until the release of the joker's world dlc and that is complete and collect all of spider's wanted bounties the one which costs five gold fragments the one which rewards you powerful gear he brings one of these per week now i find it highly unlikely you will see the same bounty twice between now and the joker's world but if you do that's not a problem i mean more so than not, it's going to be a different bounty every single week because the amount of wanted enemies in the game to find is crazy. So these indeed from now up until Joker's World, I suggest you go grab them, complete them and stack them in your inventory because this could be a great, great way of stacking many, many powerful gear rewards for this upcoming DLC. And really guys, that's it besides the last wish raid keys. The uh, E for real keys uh, from the last wish raid, but this consists of you completing the raid numerous times to try and get these to drop. I mean, they ain't super rare, but it takes some doing. I believe you can stack these from each character too. I believe eight per character or 24 on a single character. This is what I was told as there are 24 keys for 24 chests in the raid in that end room. But do not quote me on that guys, but I know you can stack them up to a certain amount. And these light bounties after the DLC drops, you can use them all at the same time, reward new gear, which will 100% help you in terms of leveling up that power level. That is for sure people. And besides that, there's not much else you can do. Like I said, Prime Engrams, which are a great way of leveling up now, will not help you. You cannot stat these. I mean, you can stat them, but they won't help you. Hawthorne's 5k XP weekly bounty does not stack. The Clan Engram rewards do not stack either. And there's nothing really from A to 1 you can pick up and stack either. I mean, I know when you're playing the Forge, there's a rare chance of getting a powerful gear bounty to drop. That will work perfectly, but it's a rare drop. But if you do have one of them inside your inventory, complete it and stack that too, guys. But yes, people, this is a guide on what to do to get ahead in the game when a Joker's World drops in terms of leveling up that power level. And on that note, guys, we have come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. And if you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos like guides, top fives, gameplays, reviews, just about everything with an unbiased, open-minded opinion, make sure you subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But again, guys, thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I'll see you on that next one.